What is going on everybody and welcome back to Mad Detailing. Today's video is on this 2019 Audi RS3. We actually ceramic coated this vehicle about three years ago, but the customer has taken this Audi to the dealership recently to get the front end painted. And they have absolutely did a number on this vehicle. Not only did they leave behind a ton of wet sand scratches, but they have covered the entire vehicle in overspray. And I'm guessing that the detail department got a hold of this vehicle because it has been improperly washed, causing a ton of swirls and scratches. But don't worry, in this video, we are gonna be restoring this Audi back to its show car condition. So if you guys are new to this channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. I post brand new videos every Thursday at 12 p.m. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this Audi detail. Starting off this detail, we're cleaning the wheels first, and for this we're using our Extreme APC on the tires and fender wells, and for the wheels we're using our Mad Detailing Iron Eraser along with multiple different brushes so we make sure we get every inch of this wheel and tire 100% clean. And also to answer a question that I get a lot is why does the Iron Eraser turn purple when you're cleaning wheels? And that's because of the design. Anytime that the iron eraser comes in contact with any type of rail dust, brake dust, or any metal particles, it will turn purple. But that just means that the product is working how it should and is getting all that brake dust removed from the surface. After getting all the wheels clean, it's time to move on to this paint. So what we're doing now is we're using our pressure washer to blow off all the loose dirt and debris before foaming the entire vehicle down with our mad detailing super blue soap. We're gonna let the soap dwell for a little bit, pressure wash it off, and then we can move on to foaming the vehicle down again. And then moving on to a contact wash with a soft microfiber wash mitt.
So what we're using now is our mad detailing iron eraser. And what that's gonna do is going to remove all the iron buildup and decontamination that is inside of the clear coat that won't come out with simply just washing it. And moving on to cleaning these seats, we're using our mad detailing leather cleaner along with a soft detail brush to agitate the surface and then a microfiber to mop it all up. I know these seats did not look dirty, but wait till you guys see me cleaning the back of the seats because just look at the microfiber. It is absolutely brown and disgusting. So yeah, even if your leather does not look dirty, you never know, it could be extremely dirty. And one way you can tell is that if your leather has a shine to it, it is most likely dirty because leather is supposed to have a matte finish to it from the factory.
And honestly, I was completely mind blown with cleaning the steering wheel. I've done a lot of disaster details and they don't even have steering wheels this dirty, but just look at the amount of grime and grease that was on this steering wheel. And also, if you guys are wondering, our mad detailing leather cleaner can be used on all suede and Alcantara. But one tip when cleaning an Alcantara steering wheel or any type of Alcantara is mostly they don't have a foam backing. So you wanna keep them as dry as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm spraying our mad detailing leather cleaner on the microfiber and I'm just simply rubbing it into the surface and I'm gonna repeat that multiple times. But yeah, you don't ever really, really wanna just spray the cleaner on there because it can detach and that would be no good. But yeah, cleaning Alcatara is a very timing process, but when done right, it looks brand new. So what I'm using now to protect the surfaces is our Mad Detailing Ceramic Interior Detailer. And I absolutely love this product. It gives leather, plastics, dashes, pretty much anything that you use it on a brand new look and a brand new feel. And it smells absolutely amazing. So if you would like to try this product or any of our products, head on down to www.maddetailingusa.com. I will also have a link in the description for you guys along with a coupon code that you can use at checkout to save 20%.
As I mentioned at the very beginning, this vehicle does have a ton of overspray on it. So to remove it, we're using our mad detailing clay lube and a synthetic clay bar. And that's gonna get all the overspray removed from the paint and windows. And it's also gonna remove all the decontamination because anytime you're doing a paint correction or any type of sealant, always make sure to clay bar your surface. First part of this correction, we're using our five inch polishers with a Eurofiber microfiber cutting pad. And we're also using Sonex Ultimate Cut. And since the vehicle has been painted previously, the hood, the fenders and the front bumper, the paint is gonna be different in the way it reacts. So we are just taking our time here and moving section by section, making sure this paint is perfect. And once we have all the defects removed, it'll be time to polish it. And for that, we're using our Rupes six inch polishers with a red polishing pad and Sonex Perfect Finish. We will also be using multiple different uh, polishers, DAs and rotaries. That way we can get into the tight places that the big buffers cannot get into. So always remember anytime you're doing any type of correction with a microfiber pad or foam pad, you always wanna blow out your pad with compressed air to get all the paint residue and compound or polish out of your pad. So anytime you're doing corrections, make sure you guys are always blowing out your pad and changing them out frequently.
after we get the entire vehicle wiped down with prep spray before we lay any type of ceramic coating i always like to do a full walk around of the entire vehicle with multiple inspection lights and inspect every single panel to make sure they are as perfect as they can possibly be and that the paint is 100 ready for the ceramic coating because you don't want to go ahead and apply ceramic coating and then go back and do a check later on and realize that you missed some defects and then have to strip the ceramic coating repolish it and apply it again anytime you're applying ceramic coating you always want to apply it in a cross hatching pattern and depending on the ceramic coating that you are using you want to work in a two by two section since i know this coating very well i know how it works and it also has an extremely fast flash time and what that means is the flash time is the time that you have to wait before you can wipe off the coating and as you can see I am using an inspection light and a brand new microfiber towel. I always recommend using two towels, but I like to change my microfibers out almost every single panel. So yeah, we're working in a little bit bigger than two by two sections, but anytime you're applying a ceramic coating, you want to make sure you have an inspection light and you're making sure that you remove all the residue because you do not want to leave behind high spots. So I know you guys are probably wondering what ceramic coating I'm using, and I can't tell you just yet because we are working on a secret project, but I am super excited about it. It has got to be my favorite coatings I've used to date, and I've used a lot of ceramic coatings. It is not that hard to apply for being a professional grade ceramic coating that lasts seven years. And also this ceramic coating is a one layer ceramic, so that means that there is not a base coat and a top coat, and also it can be used on everything paint, wheels, trim, and glass. So I honestly believe that this ceramic coating is a game changer and I cannot wait to share it with you guys.
Thank you.